and Batman. never ran this generation of Ranger on the Ike Gauntlet. Wow, look at that giant screen. You like cranking, right? Why is the oldest man here doing all this physical labor? <laughs> now, what in tarnation is this yellow thing? Why are you running so big? I mean, I told you that. I got used to bouncing in the truck, and my hand just big. So, do you think in the future they'll put a turbocharged hurricane? Whoa! Holy cow, Tesla almost did it. Oh, did right. you see that? I did. That could have been a huge accident. It could have been very huge. It's semi him and us. Or the side of the mountain. <sighs> I need to breathe. I hope you're sitting down because it's the biggest video towing test we've ever done. It's big. Yes, we have five of the all new mid-size pickup trucks. These are the small trucks. And we're doing what? It's this the world's toughest towing test, the Super Ike. That's right. We have the Tacoma. We have the GM Chevy Colorado. We have the Ford Ranger. We have the Jeep Gladiator and the Frontier Nissan. Let's That's go. True. Cool. Mr. Truck. Yes, sir. This Iganta is starting already in the, with excitement because there are not many lights in this tunnel. It was really dark. Yes, yes, and that's, that sludge off of all this snow has coated everything. It looks pretty gringy in here, but this is a cool Iganta. It's five mid-sized trucks. Dude, this is the biggest and the most important eye gauntlet I think we ever have done in 12 years. Yeah, this is awesome. All right, we're popping out of the tunnel in the first truck in this competition. This is a 2024 Nissan Frontier hard body. Cool, are you going out at 50 miles an hour? I am, I, I'm, I'm watching my speedo, I'm in tow hole mode, and I'm gonna release the accelerator and we're gonna count brake applications. All righty. It seems riding a little rough. You notice that? Well, well, you know, um, we'll go over every possible spec and number, and uh, we don't have a lot of payload in this truck, by the way. That's true. It's only a thousand ninety. Okay, so it's almost eleven hundred. Yeah. It's so that's my first lowest. brake application. Okay, there's one. Oh, I gotta write this down officially. So we did downshift. So the important part about the downhill, right? So you're not overusing your brakes. Exactly. That's and, what tow haul is supposed to do. Yeah. So the engine is supposed. To, it's the transmission is supposed to downshift. The engine RPM is supposed to come up a little bit. Oh, second one. Holy cow! That's fast. There we go. Well, this is almost the fanciest Nissan Frontier you could have. Right. And the payload number is 1,090 pounds. Oh, that seems kind of low, but I guess it's full of accessories on this Frontier. Yeah, I wish it had a little bit more payload, but. It is what it is now. That's true. These were very popular trucks in the old days. I hope they pick it all up. I, I don't feel a lot of sway. You know, we're moving at highway speeds. Yeah. So the suspension is actually, even though it's squatted, here's my next one. Holy cow. Hope I got enough room on this paper. <laughs> <laughs> we're using a wireless aftermarket brake controller. This is Prodigy RF. And it's connected and it's working properly, but Nissan doesn't offer a built-in brake controller. Well, that's too bad because they're starting to become popular in mid-size. A few of them have them now. Yep. So anyway, catch up Frontier. You want people to tell with your Frontier. Here's yeah. another one. Oh my goodness. We're pulling over in a trucker lane. There's a runaway ramp oh, if you want to take it. Cool, we got to try it. Deep snow and runaway ramp. Well, Andre, this is the mid-size class. Where's the Honda Ridgeline? Well, the Honda Ridgeline is kind of an outlier because it doesn't have a high enough tow rating. It also doesn't have a body on frame construction. So we're gonna have more videos coming with the Honda Ridgeline with these trucks. Cool. Now, what in tarnation is this yellow thing? Well, we're also towing 6,200 pounds. This is an Aluma trailer. And this is a Dodge Dakota because Ram currently doesn't build a mid-size truck. <laughs> it's a road and track too. <laughs> it's an RT Magnum V8. And you will see more about this Dodge Dakota in upcoming videos. So stay tuned to oldtfl.com. But I want to thank our friends at Aluma Trailers and Rifle Truck and Trailer. After this other brake application, let me look at my temperatures, right? Because yeah, I want to make good. sure the transmission is in the right temp. Here's my next one. Okay, we're up to five. 
Well, I was glad to see the Frontier came out. It, it, you know, I've always liked the Frontier, and they sold so many of these. They're very popular. I don't know that the sales are good right now, but they used to be. So we're running these trucks in the order of kind of sales. Yeah. In 2023, the new Nissan Frontier and the Jeep Gladiator uh, are about the same. I mean, they're fighting for kind of the same number of sales. Yeah, that is. That's a loaded uh, category when there's five trucks in it. Yeah, well, there's more actually. I mean, there's the Ridgeline in this also yeah, as well, but yeah. we don't have a Ridgeline today because we are towing 6,200 pounds. Yeah, and the Honda doesn't will not pull that weight. The oh. Honda is only rated at 5,000. Here's my other brake application. Are you ready? Yeah. I guess I can write on the back of this when you're full. How many are we up to now? We're six. Okay, so. You know, 10 brake applications in the mid-size truck would be okay-ish. Yeah. But if it's yeah, way sure. more than 10, it's not okay. No, no. Well, this has got that hard body package. Does that mean the suspension is a little stiffer? Is this more of an off-road package? Or? No, hard body package is kind of heritage related, right? Okay, okay. So the heritage of this truck, you know, the original hard body trucks, which had the double wall bed, right? The, hence the name hard body. Yeah. Um, and we have the wheels, the wheel flares. We can show you guys that. Okay, another one. Uh, this is actually an SV, so oh, Nissan right. Frontier SV, which means it's kind of a mid-grade right, truck. Right, right. Remember that. Uh, and the mid-grade, you know, it's kind of middle of the road, but it, then it has several different packages. Hard body is one of them. And at the end of this video, we'll also talk about value, right, oh, yeah, and price. Yeah. And you'll be surprised. This truck is actually starts out affordably, but with every package we have here, uh -huh. it's one of the highest priced today. Well, Nissan, really? That's wild, because Nissan's always been known for being a little on the side of economical, and that's you know why they sold so many of them, I think. Now, since I'm looking at the mirror, can I talk about the mirror size? Well, one more application. Okay, one more brick application. Mr. Truck, do you want to show our grading sheet? We're, we're going all out did today. You, did you hit another brake application? Yeah, I think you counted it. Yeah. Where's, where's the camera? <laughs> I know, he's in the back seat. There's the camera. Isn't that cool? Yeah, we're, we're going we're all like, out. We're all like official now. We've got <laughs> clipboards and, and sheets. Right, here we go, another one. Okay. Where are we at now? We are at nine. The I Gauntlet is an eight mile run. So um, we're hoping for 10 applications. That would be kind of average ish. Um, but hopefully, it's, you know, most of these trucks do less than 10. Yeah. We're almost at the end. Oh, I have to hit the brakes again, dude. 61 miles per hour. Son of again, we hit 10. There we go. That's 10? That's 10. We're almost leveled out. So I think that is official. Cool. 10 brake applications in the Nissan Frontier. Now let's see how it goes up the mountain. Oh sure, so about average on that. Our Tacoma video series would not be possible without our friend Scott O'Sullivan and O'Sullivan Law Firm. Use the link or the phone number in the description below if you, your friends, or your family members are in an accident, you gotta call Scott first. He's a friend of ours, and he's a really great attorney. All right, we're gonna launch up the mountain, um, and this is super high elevation. That's why the Ike Gauntlet is a world's toughest towing oh, test. That's cool, it is a tough one, and it's, it's a, like a so I'm, lane. So I'm gonna start highway. at 35 miles an hour as always. I'm gonna floor it, and you start the timer. Yes. Now. Are you wide open throttle? I'm wide open. Do you feel the acceleration? No, I, I hear the noise. <laughs> is that what it's supposed to do? Well, see, okay, this engine is a V6, the no, no turbos. It revs super high. Um, yes, at 40, can you, can 400. Can you lift the um, phone? Oh, lift 60 miles an hour. How yeah, many? 22. Show the camera, please. It was, it's going past that, but it was a 22 cameraman. All right, so it took about, what, 20 to 22 seconds to reach 60. Yeah. Um, and it's it, run, yeah, it's pretty high RPM, but it could be. I mean, it goes clear up to 6,400 RPM on the horsepower. That is wide open throttle that they measured at, right? 6,400 should be red line. Yeah, the red line on this engine is about 6,600. So oh, this is. engine is a screamer. Okay. 
we're going to be measuring time up the mountain. Yeah. If we can make, you know, eight minutes would be a perfect run. We're going to measure MPG. We're going to measure decibel level, how loud or quiet it is. Okay. So we're going to have a few data points for you to compare to decide which truck is the best. Andre, what's under the hood of this Nissan Frontier? Well, this truck has had this engine for several years, actually. This is still the 3.8 liter V6 traditional non-turbo engine. Okay. They used to have a 4 liter. That's bigger, but this is more powerful. Yeah, so the power ratings are 310 horsepower, which is quite good for the class, and 281 pound-feet of torque. And she's eh, now it's a little bit lowish. Yeah. But it does have a nine speed automatic, which it shares with the bigger truck, the Nissan Titan. Well, that's good. I'm glad they jumped more gears. That's cool. I'm getting to the point in the run where I have to use basically full throttle. Yeah. This is a 7% grade, the steepest allowed on an interstate. Right. And I'm at about 5,500 RPM. Okay. Do you want to try to measure the decibel level? And you, you can kind of hold it here so okay. the camera can see it. Average of 60, it jumps from 58 to 62. Really? That's pretty yeah, quiet. Uh, that is. It's amazing. It sounds a lot louder than that. The RPM is quite high, so I mean, if you are towing this much weight, be prepared for listening to that kind of, you know, high RPM yeah, sound exactly. from the engine. I'm amazed that it's not higher than that. That surprises me. So this engine does not make a lot of torque, right? About yeah. 281 pound-feet of it. Right. Uh, but what about the rear axle? Well, the rear axle, I to me, it looks like it's almost a towing one. It's a uh, 3.69 is axle ratio, and this is a nine speed. Yeah, so we do have a lot of gears to yeah. choose from. We do have an axle that's kind of, you know, it's not a 410 to one. No, you don't but, see those anymore. <laughs> we will in the Jeep. Oh, we will? Yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, but 369 to one, it's a pretty decent towing ratio. It's yeah. not terribly good for efficiency, but it's pretty good for power. Cool. Let's check out the seats. Yes, you always want something that's a comfortable ride for a long time. They're not, none of them are easy to get a cowboy hat in. Whoa, this one's long. So Ooh, it's power. It's power adjustable in the Nissan. They feel pretty thick. What do you yeah. think? How's your visibility? How's your comfort? I mean, well, the hood the hood's got that weird hump in it, so I'm not sure I like the visibility. But this is straightforward. Remember, we used to complain about GMs because they were cockeyed, the steering wheel's cockeyed. No, this is. This feels good. They also have leather seats, so these are kind of a cloth yeah. seat a surface, and they sometimes call them zero gravity. They're supposed to be one of the most comfortable seats in the, on the market. Yeah, it's kind of seat belts were designed for that, for the seat to fold down underneath. But look, it's got these handles, so if we get crazy drivers in here, you can hang on to a couple places. I like that. It's like a Razor Polaris. Now, I'm showing you guys our gauge cluster now. Um, Nissan provides several gauges, for example, oil temp, coolant temp. They're kind of over half, so over the normal temperatures, yeah. but they're staying in check. Um, and then let me check on my transmission. Oh, transmission is nice and cool, according to this gauge. Okay, what's that mean? Uh, I don't have a number yet oh, for no you. Number. There's no number. So oh. I wish Nissan would offer also numeric values for that. Yeah. But you could write down notes. So transmission temp is below half on this circle gauge. Oil temp is above half. And coolant temp is above half. Can you stop bouncing? I'm trying to ride here. <laughs> it's like trying to drink coffee in here. One I'm sorry, okay. I don't have oil temp. Now, what I have oil pressure. What was the last one you gave me? Coolant temp is above half. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, I wrote that in there. It may not be in the, in the box it's supposed to be in because I'm bouncing all over, but That's it's okay. on there. So let's look at our timer. Okay, timer. We're, we're, finishing, we're finishing our run. Ah, what did it do? It shut up, bounced off. I have timer here. Okay. So are you ready to receive the time and MPG? Yes. 
Yes, I'm gonna stop it now. Seven minutes, 52 seconds and 4.7 mpg. 4.7? Yes. That's decent. Yeah, it's actually pretty good for a gasoline-powered uh, vehicle, not a diesel. This is a Nissan Frontier measurement when it's loaded. We're measuring the height of the rear suspension. 33 and a half. Okay, 33.5. So the other side was 33 and a quarter, right? Right. So what do we call that? Just 33 and a half, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, what's between a half and a quarter? <laughs> All right, is that 30 set piece? I don't know what it is. Uh, the three eighths? Uh, no, uh, let's unhook the trailer and then measure unladen, and then we'll know a suspension squat. Oh, awesome, awesome. The hitch in the Nissan is kind of hidden behind the bumper, and I have to really go on one knee, at least, to reach it and to unhook the chains and then to um, just undo my pin. So this is not ideal. There's no. definitely better ways to do it. Yeah, you should never have to go down on a knee to unhook your chains. That's, there's several companies that do that to you. Well, you're the truck ins inspector. I so, am, man. I'm inspecting so. this truck. <laughs> How many points you got left on your CDL? All of them. I have all of my points. <laughs> okay, good. So we need to do an inspection. There's an inspection you're supposed to do before you take off. It's the unladen. What is the unladen height of this truck? Let's check it. So it's 35 and a quarter, and it was 35 and a half over there. I thought it was 35 and a quarter over there. Yes. Well, that makes 235. Well, quarter. you're the inspector. Well, I'm telling you they're the same. Okay. So that means just under two inches of squat, right? Right, do I write that down too? So one point, what, seven five? Why are you writing so big? I mean, I told you that. I got used to bouncing in the truck. My hand just big. <laughs> I didn't say I was qualified for this job. <laughs> so where do you want me to do this two inches at? That's it. Mr. Truck. Yes. Now it's Jeep Gladiator turn. Cool. This is also a V6. It's an eight-speed automatic and it's a special off-road edition. Oh yeah, it's a Mojave. Yes. All right, so I came out of the tunnel the same way I did in the Nissan, 50 miles an hour. We're gonna count brake applications, correct? Yes. And by the way, this truck does not offer a tow haul mode. Oh, really? No. It doesn't have it, anything it, else. It okay. understands. It knows. It reads your mind. Yes. Um, and first brake application right now. Okay. Look, it, do it, it downshifted. So it does know what I'm doing. Well, that's awesome. Does it show you what gear it's in? Yes, third gear. Oh, because you're in manual or you're not in manual? I'm not in manual. Wow. So Jeep and Ram have this cool feature where you can go into the setting here in the center gauge yeah. and you could tell it to show the current gear and it will show oh. you the current gear, which is beautiful. That's great because Ford does it all the time. It's all there. That's awesome. That's right. At least two companies know what's going on. We all like to know what gear we're in. Now we're getting little shutters. So this has a unique suspension. This has Fox shocks. Is it and five link on the back? Yep, with oh, coils. Awesome. So no leaf springs, but also that means our tow rating is a little bit down. Yes. Which also means we're maxed out, over maxed out. Second brake application right now. Okay. So the tow rating on this is what? Tow rate is 6,000 pounds. And we're towing 6,200. So yeah. please don't try this at home, folks. Yeah. We just want to compare competitive trucks back to back. And I feel like since I've done this 175 times with other 175 trucks over the years that, you know, I can kind of handle this one. This is the new Jeep Gladiator Mojave. Mojave means off-road runner.
right? Yes, that's what Jeep's all about. And the payload is lowish, like most off-road trucks, 1,050 pounds, and that has to do with the suspension. It's got fancy Fox shocks. Oh, cool, yeah. That that seems pretty low, but I, I understand it. It's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's mid-size. Yeah, it's lowish. I think we're gonna be maxing this truck out all the way today. Well, yeah, we're not, we don't have a lot of payload left for tongue weight. Yeah, I see that. If you do want to tell Mo get, uh, more, get a Rubicon or maybe another, like an Overland um, yeah. with a 410 uh, rear axle. Well, yeah, that's great. 410 to, 410 to one, that's fantastic. That is a towing one we used to use all the time. So maybe that'll help you on the uphill. Look, it's holding 60. Oh, here's second brake application. Oh, goodness. You mean the third one? Sorry, third brake application. Let me check uh, transmission temps because our RPMs are pretty high. Okay. So let me check that now. Transmission temp on the downhill is showing 197. So it's doing beautifully. It's not overheating at all. This is the only pickup truck in this competition with a solid front axle. Oh yeah. That's right? Cool. Yes. So the steering is a little bit different. Uh, the suspension layout is a little bit different. I have to touch my brake one more time. So is this a rack and pinion or is it a, a recirculating, recirculating ball. ball? It's a recirculating ball. Why do you have to ask me all these questions? Because you're, you're, the, you're the brain, you're being the brain. <laughs> okay, so um, the steering, I would say it's very comparable to the Nissan. It's nice and easy. There is no sway going on right now. By the yeah. way, you know, the strength of the Gladiator is it has a longer wheelbase. Oh, yeah. What's the wheelbase length? The wheelbase, I have it right down here. It is 137.3. Wowza. That's wow. a long wheelbase. That is good. And see, too, this is good for this to be handling because when we measure squat, we'll know it all. But for this being a rear coil spring suspension, you'd think it would squat more. So that'd be interesting to know just how much it does squat, but it seems to be handling very well with the coils. We're using our heavy duty, height adjustable, and very strong Gen Y hitches. Oh, they're great. And I sell them at store.mrtruck.com. You can find these puppies right there and talk to me and I'll tell you all about them. But you also sell other towing accessories, I do. right? Centromatics, we sell a lot of stuff, suspensions. So yeah, check it out in the description. There's a link in the description below. Yes. Check them out. Yes. I, I think whoever tuned the system did a really good job. Well, yeah, and the third gear is way to way to hold this thing steady going down the hill. Because your tow hall mode hopefully is holding it there. Does this have tow hall mode? No, like I said three times, it does not have tow hall mode. Oh, you said it four times? Yes. I was listening, I just wasn't paying attention. That's okay, we're almost married, <laughs> right? All right, yes. And every good couple has to ask over and over again, especially the old guy always has to ask the youngster over and over again. But you are actually getting married soon. I am, and she tells me how to drive too. <laughs> <laughs> I have to touch my brake one more time, my oh friend. Oh my gosh, don't how do it, don't that? do it, this be five. We're not quite to the middle yet, so it's there's hope. There's hope. Yeah, so if it's below 10 uh, brake applications, it's going to be a really great result for the Jeep. Exactly, exactly. Especially since we're slightly overloaded. Mr. Truck. Yes. We're done. We're done. In the Jeep. We're done. So that, what, is, what does that mean? How many? Five brake applications. Well, nearly. I did oh, not man. expect it. Oh, man. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is a good performing it truck is. downhill. You know, it is. It's actually, well, we'll see what it does uphill, but man, this is actually doing well. Very nice. Let's go up the mountain. Okay. And the comparison video like this would not be possible without many sponsors. And I gotta throw a thank you to our friends at Brighton Ford, Colorado. Check them out using the link in the description below. A video like this would not be possible without many friends. We're tackling the mountain in the Jeep. I'm gonna approach that 35. I'm resetting my trip meter. Did just you say go? Yes. Sorry. All right, I'm gonna tell you when I hit 60. Okay. Um, this engine is also wrapping up. I mean, this is a, not a turbocharged V6. Yeah. It's a Pentastar 3.6 liter. I'm still not quite there yet. And now. 24 and a half. So this is slower than the Nissan. Yeah. 
Yeah, the Nissan was around 20 to yeah, 22 that's seconds. That's what I thought it was, yeah. yeah. So a little bit slower. Okay, so but that's all right. geared lower, it means it should get through the gears quicker, I would think. All right, so I'm going to try to maintain. By the way, can you write that down um, on the uphill that we accelerated in 24 seconds? Okay. Okay, you got an uphill and you got a time. You don't have time for... I don't have a place. Can you make okay. a note I'll make on a, the side? I'll make a note on, on the, the side. side. 27? 24 seconds 24. acceleration. Okay. So I just uh, pinned the throttle. I'm 100% throttle right now. Okay. And it's slowing down just a touch. So I, I can't do anything else. We're already in third gear. Yeah. I can't really downshift. We're at 5,000 RPM. So this engine has less horsepower than the Nissan and also less torque, right? Exactly. Yeah, torque and it's 260. Yeah, so um, that axle should be, you know, doing everything it possibly can to help yeah, us. And that's why it's holding the RPM so high. Of course, now it's dropped out some. Do you know what gear are we in now? Third. Third. So, Andre, is this a V6? <laughs> yes. So, Jeep has been using the same Pentastar 3.6 liter, right? For ages. Yeah. I think I used to be in college when this engine was introduced. Well, I remember a long time ago. <laughs> So the power ratings are lowish by today's standard, right? Right. 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. And it does have a pretty robust eight-speed automatic. Okay, do you want to measure my sound levels? Yes. Well, that makes sense. I would say it's going between 67 and 68, which why is that louder than the Why does that make sense? It does well. It may, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The range is making sense, not the fact that it's that high. Do we do it again? Yeah. That looks better. Sixty-five was a low, and sixty-eight was a high. So. All right. So a 66. little bit six. A little bit louder than a Nissan. Just a little bit. Um, I have a. I have an idea about this. Okay. Uh, this is a removable top. Right. And our windscreen is very upright, oh, too. Oh, yeah, that's pretty flat. So not just the engine noise, but also the air noise I can hear from the windscreen. Yes. Um, and also from the roof a little bit. So so it's a hair louder, but still not uh, annoying, I would say. No, not really. It's not like, it's not road noise by any means. No, there is no tire noise whatsoever. What was the DB level? 66, let's say. Yeah. Because let's average that out. I am still pinned 100% throttle. Uh, the truck is still climbing at 50 miles an hour, but it's not 60. Yeah, so, that, so. that's, yeah, that uh, it's not going up the hills fast is what the frontier was. My oil temp right now is 246. Don't write this down yet, because okay. I want to monitor this. So okay. my oil temp is 246. My oil pressure is 80, so that's good. And then my coolant temp is 212. So actually my temperatures are decently okay. Yeah. Uh, the oil is a little warm, I would say, compared to other vehicles in other, from other manufacturers. Right. Uh, but Jeep says it's normal, so they're okay with that. Okay. Still, my, my leg is cramping. I, I'm just kind of using as, as much pedal as I can. I'm gonna change lanes. But you're not gaining any speed. Is this the real steepest part of the run? Yeah, it is. And it's the highest and the t toughest. Everybody's passing us. We're not even near the fast lane. So do you think in the future they'll put a turbocharged hurricane? Whoa! Holy cow, Tesla almost bit it. Oh, Did right you see goodness. that? I did. That could have been a huge accident. It could have been very huge. It's semi him and us. Over the side of the mountain. <sighs> I need to breathe. Sorry. Breathe in. <sighs> breathe out. How about the Jeep Gladiator seat? The well, seat's good because it's got a threshold. Usually the threshold is, I guess, to keep water out, but that's usually for unibodies, and this is a body on frame. I'm surprised you have to climb over that hump, but oh well, I guess if it's deep water, it's deep water. It seems like you're sitting higher in this truck. It is. And it's manual adjustments. Yeah, yeah. These are cool. I just wish they had that tire track down the middle like they used to have on the Rebels. Well, it's a cool <laughs> stitching. They have really cool stitching on these seats. Yeah, Mojave. But how would you compare, just, just first impression, uh, Frontier seat versus Gladiator seat? Well, it's going to mean this, the one I climbed out of was a little softer. 
and the bolsters seem to be closer to me. Now, see, I'm a big, big boy reporter, so I, I, I can't have too big a bolster or I won't fit in the chair. But uh -huh. no, it's good. It's comfortable. I like, I like the angle, and it's, it's relatively good clearance over the, over the windshield or the hood. I can see well over the hood, and uh, it's got, it's got a neat looking interior. Fuel mileage is so important, just like back in the 80s. They turbocharged everything, you know, four bangers, mostly six bangers, four bangers. So that might be the same pattern that's going to happen now. They're going to start throwing turbos on everything to get better fuel mileage. And more depends, power, too. And it all depends on what the gas prices are. So gas keeps going up and down crazy. They can't make a decision right now. Yep. The turbo is pretty efficient way of doing it, increasing the power. And that's the rumor. Jeep hasn't said anything about a straight six turbo in the Jeep, but the, the rumors are flying that they're going to turbocharge this truck. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens in, in general. Yeah, they still have the diesel in this. They just discontinued the oh, three liter um, eco diesel. Oh wow! I'm. S oh. oh my dude, are, you, are you on the way to the floor? I'm in second gear, my friend. We're launching. Oh my gosh. Trans Step 201. Do you want to write this down? Yes. Trans Step 201. Trans Temp 203. 203. Oil Temp 248. Coolant Temp 226. Dude, I, I could not keep, I could not maintain 60 miles an hour. So we're crossing the finish line at the top of the mountain, bam, nine minutes and 28 seconds, correct? My, my 924. Okay, so yeah, about 925 and 4.7 MPG showing. All right, now let's measure the laden suspension height on the Jeep Gladiator. 37 and three quarters, cool. which matches the other side. Wow. Now, let's unhook and measure the unladen height. Cool. Now, Mr. Truck, or should I call you Inspector, uh, we need to unhook the Jeep. So, this is the breakaway cable, of course, for emergencies, emergency braking. Um, so, I gotta tell you that on the Jeep, the hitch is a little bit more accessible. I could see it better oh, definitely. Um, than the Nissan. Yeah, that was much quicker. I hooked it up and it was very easy to do. I like that. All right, here, I'm gonna give you this so you can crank. You like cranking, right? Why is the oldest man here doing all this physical labor? <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. I'm 66 years old and I have to do all the cranking. All right, now let's measure the unladen height on the Jeep. Oh, that's almost 40, like 39 and three quarters. Right here. Okay. So where were we before? We were at 37 and 75, 37 okay. and three quarters. So that's basically just over two inches of squat, right? Maybe two. Yeah, a little, yeah, close to that. So that's the, not what it looked like. It looked like it was squatting a lot more. Yeah, so you're gonna call it officially a two? Yeah, two. This is basically the main event because this is the all new 2024 Ford Ranger. That's right. That's cool. It's an FX4. That's all. And, and we've never ran this generation of Ranger on the Icon flip. Wow, look at that giant screen. It's 12 inch. Yeah, that's all awesome. Right. So I'm in Toho mode. I'm coming out of the tunnel at 50. And I'm going to let go of the accelerator about the exact same way, exact same procedure. We're going to count brake applications. Okay. You're in sixth gear, huh? I'm in six. I, it, I don't know, but it hasn't downshifted yet. Okay. There, downshifted. Okay, we're loaded. I have to touch the brake once. Okay, gotcha. That was the first brake. Sorry, there's, there was some traffic here, so I, I, it was a little bit of a tense moment there. Oh yeah, you're in the, you're in the fast lane. It went down from sixth gear to fourth gear. Fourth gear. Wow, that's one just one jump. 
one smooth jump. Wow. By the way, this is a 10-speed automatic here. Yeah, it's the only 10-speed. Oh, speed. second brake application. Okay, we're kicking him in. Well, Ford calls us the all-new Ranger because really they touched a lot of the components of this truck, including the frame, the suspension, the interior. The engine stays the same. But the payload is, I think, more than ever. 1,000. 524 pounds for this one. Now that's a payload. That's what they all should be. Yes. That's the weight. And you know, that's about what a half ton does too. A full size truck, most of those are 1,500. Yeah. And also, this is an XLT with a lot of options. Sure. So sure. if this was more basic truck, you could have even more payload. Exactly. No, this is cool. I like that number. Moving. Another brake application. Holy cow. We're going to run through them quickly. I know it's a rough road, but how's it handling on it? Is it steering uh, tight? Yeah, it's pretty good. So the steering kind of matches the other two trucks we just tested. Right. Uh, I feel pretty, you know, good and confident. There is no trailer sway. Um, and in fourth gear, this does not appear to have a lot of braking force. How many RPMs are we? At about 44, 500. Another one. Okay, wow. Well, tow haul mode should be kicking in better than that. Well, it is on. I know it's on, it's but a, I mean, yeah. you would think that would kick the RPMs up and maybe go down a gear, but fourth, most of those others were in third gear, weren't they? Going down and up. Let me turn up my gain a little bit. We tested our gain. By the way, a built-in brake controller. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's right there, and it's I on the it. right side, and it's very oh, visible. Perfect. Thank you, Ford. Yes. Okay, another one. Oh my gosh, we're at five. Trucks are starting to pass us. All right, let me. It's pretty quiet in here. I mean, those RPMs. Oh yeah, I, I can barely hear the engine. Yeah. It's and this really... has a turbo. And it's very small displacement. It's a 2.3 liter. Yeah. So it's a totally different setup. We've tested two kind of a larger V6s, right? Yeah. And now we're going to a small displacement four cylinder. So did it kick down the third just now, or because it's jumped? Oh, we did it by itself. Yeah. Well, that's good. Okay, another that's what one. It's supposed to do. Maybe it'll get better. Six. I'm surprised because I thought with that many gears. Yeah. And uh, rear axles is 373. Right, it's a very good axle ratio. 373 has a towing axle. And you would think that it would use more of the gears. Why is it jumping two at a time? That's wild. I, guess, right. it, I guess the so, computer thought that's what it should do. So we are now in third gear. It's providing me a little bit higher RPM, about 5,000. Yeah. And, and now a little bit more braking force. Right, it should hold you there, it really should. The whole mode's working right. 60. There, I have to touch it again. Seven brake applications. I'm gonna run out of ink in this pen. <laughs> Here, I found my transmission gauge. Okay. It's right here um, in the center, but it's not a numeric value. Oh. It's kind of similar to the Nissan, but it's nice and cool right now. Is and it at half or what's it at? It's below half. So it's showing currently as nice and cooled. Okay. But I'm touching it again. I'm hitting oh, the brake. Now we're 10. We're 10, Ranger. So what, uh, have you done? can you see the engine coil or the oil temperature? It's also not a numeric value. Um, Is it below half? I don't, I don't see it right now. Okay. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, coolant temperature is half. Coolant temperature is... And oil pressure is about 50 PSI, so nice and easy. We're done with the downhill portion in the Ranger. Okay. And that's how many brake applications? Ten. 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 That's a little bit more than I expected. Yeah, yeah. But still, okay. Uh, you know, the brakes work great. Um, well, a great ship is some. A great ship I would like. Yeah. Now let's see how it goes up the mountain. Cool. See if this turbo really helps us this altitude. All right, we're about to launch up the I Gauntlet Mountain. Let me set it at 35, and then I'm gonna slam it down. I'm gonna reset. You ready? Yes. Reset now. Okay, ready for your 60 mile an hour test here. Wow, I can already feel the torque building. Oh yeah, that's good, that's, that's good. That's really good torque. 
and 58, 59, 60. 14. Whoa, that's a lot better than the Nissan and the Jeep. Well, well yeah, I knew one was 20, I don't know what the other one was, but yeah. That torque was impressive. What's the RPM of the maximum torque? When does it come in? Oh, it's 3,000 RPM. All right. Which is low. Yeah, that's, because that's good. those V6s, you have to rev them to at least 4,400 RPM to yeah, get the maximum yeah, torque. Yeah, exactly. So 3,000, that gives you that power early, which you want. Yeah. So you so join. It's not too bad. It's not really class leading because the Toyota, which is coming soon, the Tacoma, has even more torque down low. Um, I am having no issue keeping the speed. I'm feathering the throttle between, you know, partial throttle, and I'm keeping speed. And should we uh, measure sound levels now? Because oh, I think yeah, the, you're, you're ready where the peak noise I'm, is. I'm ready. Okay, let me get ready. Man, that's close. 60 to 61, but it's bouncing higher and lower, so I'd say I'm going to call it 60. I would agree. I mean, my perception here, sitting here, and I know we're using mics, right? Yeah. But my perception is, so far out of the three trucks we've tested, this is the quietest. Yeah, I concur. So 60 decibels makes sense. By the way, anything under 70 decibels is really a nice, comfortable truck. Because uh, when I'm speaking right now, I'm speaking to you probably at about 85 decibels. Yeah. So anything under 70 is good. Well, Jets used to be 90. And now I think they're somewhere around 70. Really? Yeah. I thought fighter jets like could blow out your oh, eardrums. Yeah, but that's not passenger jet. Passenger jet used to be 90, 95. Tractors on the farm, they used to be 90s. And the cab would echo and you lose some hearing doing that. So Andre, the new Ranger, is it the same engine? Yes, so this one does still have the 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four. And the power rating is the same, carryover basically. 270 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. But out of these five trucks, the transmission is unique. The only one with 10-speed. Yes, so they're using more gears. Uh, it works for them. We'll see how it works today on the mountain. Yeah, so three of these trucks have turbos. Rear axle ratio on this is 3.73, which is good for trailers. It is, so this yeah. is actually set up for trailering. Yeah, and it also has a rear locker. I know we're not reviewing off-road pieces right now. Yeah. But uh, that Jeep had a rear locker. The Frontier did not because it wasn't a Pro4X. But still, all of them have solid rear axles, but only the Jeep has a solid front axle. That's true, that's true. It's a Jeep thing, that's what they do. And the towing capacity is 7,500 and we're towing 6,200. Yeah. So we're not, it's not like a max hike on this one. No, and that's really good payload. I mean, over 1,500 pounds of payload, that's like a half ton full size truck that's, type of payload. That's true, that is. That's about most of the, the half ton full size are. And look at this, I'm in the fast lane. Holy cow, how fast are you going? I'm going 60. Have you I'm, averaged 60? Uh, yeah. Wow. I have no issues. No issues with speed. I could go maybe 80 if, if the speed limit allowed. You know, they made this truck a little bit wider and a little bit longer wheelbase for this new generation. And oh, it's really? now two inches wider in track. The wheelbase is, they stretched a little bit to about 128.7 inches. Yeah. But it's still a shorter wheelbase than the Tacoma, the Colorado, and of course the Gladiator has the longest wheelbase. Yeah. Now the ground clearance is pretty decent, it's 9.3 inches. That's yeah, good for what this bad. truck is. Yeah. And you know, that's uh, not bad at all, not bad at all. All right. So yeah, I'm having no issues. By the way, the suspension is not the softest or most compliant, I would say. This road is beating all the trucks up. You know, I complained about the Frontier, but they're all having their problems on this road, and that's because of the damn chain damage. The skiers, the trucks, of course, the trucks are required to raise, you know, wear chains. They can't help yep. it. Yep. It's a big fine if you don't. By the way, we are carrying chains, uh, just in case. Of course, it's a beautiful day. 40, can you believe that? 46 degrees at ambient temperature? Well, it's March, man. It's spring almost. It's springtime. Spring is next week, isn't it? Sometimes. Yes, soon. it's this week. This week. Yeah, it's springtime. Oh, the Ranger. What about this new Ford Ranger? Well, I just slid right into here because there's no threshold, but no. This is cool. You know, the seats aren't bad. 
Now you've driven one of these a long distance, right? Yeah, I did. I, I just did Salt Lake City to Denver, about 500 miles. I think they're really comfy. You know what I, I what's unique here? These are also cloth seats, not leather. You can yeah. also get leather. Is that the door opening is kind of large. Oh, it is. You, it see, is. The, you see what I'm saying? That's, this is what probably right now the easiest truck to climb into. This yeah. This is what the uh, and also, gladiator was. I mean, do you, does this seat seem like a Nissan seat to you or something else? You know, it does remind me of the Frontier. Okay. I think that's a good thing. They look, they look very close. Yeah. Now look at you guys. Look at the size of the screen on this puppy. That's really gotten big Whoa. since last year. Big screen. Wow, good. Yeah, there's plenty of cubby holes. No, the seat to me is good, but you know you're a better judge at 500 miles than I am. My oil temp is at about 75 percent of the uh, graph. Oil temp 75. My transmission temp is about 50% of the graph. Yeah, we did all that. And my, I just found my coolant temp. It's on the left. It's about half of the graph. Right, that's what I've got for that. Okay, good. And the, uh, the coolant, the uh, transmission was a, a below one half. Okay. The graph. Okay. Uh, we have a little bit of an issue. Uh, they shut down the tunnel. So, baby, start. Get your timer, please. Okay. So, we had a perfect run so far. Let me say what my MPG is. Okay. It says 4.8 MPG. Hold on. 4.8. And seven minutes and 50 seconds time. So, uh, the time is not going to be a problem. Well, that's about right because if you were driving 60 the whole way, you, you, you should be eight or a little under. So I, yeah, I concur, since I'm the truck. You, you're the inspector. Inspector. Yeah. yeah. Now let's measure the laden suspension height in the Ford Ranger. Cool. This is three feet thirty-six and a half. Thirty-six and a half. What is this? These are all equalizing on all these trucks. So those one. are both sides equal, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now let's unhitch and measure again. Yes, indeed. So, Mr. Truck, the hitch here, the two-inch receiver, is the furthest out and the easiest to see, so that's really good. I like that. And then the, uh, the tow chain attachments are kind of further back. Yeah. Ooh, do you hear that Jake break? Yeah. So yeah, not I, bad, but you still had to get on your knee. That, that's not good. You shouldn't no, have to get on the ground. No, no, so I think they hit those chain hoops because of off-roading, right? Yeah. So it's the clearance is better, but it's not better for towing. All right, now let's measure the Ranger without the trailer unladen. That's 38 and a quarter. It was 38 and a half on the other side. Yes, yes. Let's call it two inches of squat. But there's something else going on in the Ranger, right? Two, yes, what? L let's take a step back. Oh, it's so, got that wedge between the spring and the axle, making it look like the squat's less because it's jacked up more to begin with. Yeah, so when it's empty, <sighs> the rear end is high and the front is not as high. So and you know what that makes it look like? What? A, in, in, H. I okay. Can't, I can't say the words. The it other trucks like are it. level when they're unladen. The Ford is not really level when it's unladen. That's what they do with that max towing package and all their other trucks. Mr. Truck, now we're turning up the heat. Up the heat? Yes, because we are currently in the new Chevy Colorado. Okay. Which is mechanically identical to the new GMC Canyon. Yes. Which combined outsell the Frontier and the Gladiator and also the Ranger currently. So this wow. is the next best seller. Wow. Yes. Well, that's good. And we're going to pop out of the tunnel. This is the downhill section and we're going to count brake applications. Well, cool. Well, I think this has got the most power of anything in the midsize class, isn't it? And the most torque right most now. Most torque. Yeah, so, the yeah. most mucho. And, more, and highest, probably highest towing rating at 7,700. Yeah. So that's got a lot of class leading sayings. And, and this particular one also belongs to me. Oh. It just so happens that I own this one. Yeah, because you got this special color, so you always find it in a parking lot. Yes, I did. All right, so I'm popping out. I'm in tow hole mode. Our brake gain is set, everything is proper. 
and I think I will have to do my first brake application coming up here in a second. Yes, here it is. Okay, there's one. This is my first brake application. Send the box. By the way, GM does not have a gear indicator. Oh, I, I mean, know. I yeah, can put the selector. it in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I can put it in manual shift mode or the range select mode. Um, oh, second one. Oh my goodness. You must be must be really hauling. All right, now the, it's waking up, kind of. Now it downshifted again. And you got into a haul mode. Yep. They're decent, decent machines. And if you're from Colorado, why would you not want to drive a Colorado? <laughs> Third brake application. Oh my goodness. Right, we are They're coming brake. fast and furious. Running out of paper. All right. It's a nice size screen too. I like that. Oh yeah. And we'll monitor different uh, data here. Yeah. So our coolant currently is 196 degrees. Our transmission is 198. Okay. And by the way, this is super solid too. The steering feels good. There is no trailer sway. Oh, another one. Holy cow. Now, does this have a turbo gauge to tell you how much it's pumping out? No, Ford did. Yeah. Ford had a PSI gauge on, yeah. the, on the turbo. This does not. And this is a different philosophy, right? Different manufacturers, um, sometimes they want to tell you more information and sometimes less. Yeah, right? that's true, that's very true. This is a Chevy Colorado Trail Bus. Trail Bus also means an off-road model. Okay. So you would think the payload would be kind of lowish, right? Yeah, there's a few more things on there for off-road. Yeah, but Chevrolet and GM, they do really well. So 1,514 pounds for this guy. That's great, and that also has the highest towing rating of any of them. 7,700 pounds for this guy. Yeah. Ford Ranger is 7,500 pounds. Yeah. 6,000 pounds on the Jeep and 6,500 pounds for the Frontier and the Tacoma. Yeah, yeah, so that's cool. A great payload and a great trailer number. Those are two things I really like. So it kind of combines affordability with capability. Yes. What's my rear axle? That may be my problem. Oh, the axle my ratio rear axle. is... A 342. Ooh, it's lower. I mean, yeah, it, sorry, the number is lower. Yeah, so which that's is not good for towing. No, we're, uh, well, that's kind of their towing thing, isn't it? For it is. Trucks, it it's is. 342. So that's what they think it needs to be. Another one. And it's an eight speed, so. Another one. Oh my gosh, I'm going to spend all my time marking numbers now. Okay, how's it, how's it handling? Is it tight steering? Yeah, the steering feels good. You know, I'm not clenching the steering wheel. The trailer's controllable. Yeah, very good. nice. Good. And trans stamp, I guess we can write this down. Okay, let me go. Okay, trans stamp downhill. Okay, what it's, is it? It was 203. 203. 203 degrees downhill. Ooh, it went to 205 for a second. Wow. That was another one, number 10. Can you mark Good 10? Good gosh, 10. Well, we're no longer impressed with our braking. No. Uh, and actually, we ran this truck on the Ike before. I don't remember it performing this way. Well, what? Do you remember what the weight was? We usually tow more than this. We, we've towed, you know, larger trailers, maybe more of a sail. Yeah. Sorry, I have a giant semi truck barreling on my neck. I see that. He's on my he's on my rear <laughs> bumper. Made you get closer to this guy. Okay, another brake application. Oh, now we're into number eleven. Oh, it's King Supers. He's he's late. Oh, you're going, man. You're just picking up speed, dude. To touch it again. 12. So sad. <laughs> I, I, I thought we had better performance before. I know. Is it wore out? Do you, how many miles you put on this? No, look. I, I can watch my brakes. So if you if you zoom in here a little closer. Oh, that's how much left? Yeah. Pad how much life. brake pads I have left. Yeah. My tire pressures are up to snuff. Yeah, it's 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 everything. I've, I've double checked, triple checked everything. Um, so you got ten thousand miles. I've got ten thousand miles. My oil life, well, it's not 
too low. It's 28%. Yeah. Air filter's good. Air filter is good. I don't know. That's 12 brake applications, guys. 12. So for the Chevy Colorado, 12 brake applications. Yep. That's that's not a good performance. No. All right, let's go up the mountain. Okay, I hope this thing runs as good as it sounds. We're gonna use this torquiest engine of this bunch to uh, launch it up the mountain. It should go fast. All right, so 35, I'm at 35, I'm gonna nail it, I'll tell you when. And now. Let her rip. Okay. I mean, it's not neck breaking acceleration. And I'm at 16 now. 14. 14, eight. So actually that was the same as, basically the same as the Ford. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. Because I, I thought the extra torque here 430 pound feet of it yeah would have yeah. would have helped us but we have different axle ratios that's true and that's how they built the trucks so please don't comment andre replace your rear axle with a different one no i'm, I'm not going to change my differential um, this is the way they build the trucks and this is the way that we test the trucks yeah exactly i know the truck pretty well yeah and this truck has really great payload right yeah it's 1514 Yes, so it's over 1,500 pounds. So it's not quite where the Ranger is, but super close and really great payload. Well, yeah, then, yeah. It beats it on power and it beats it on towing, so. So Andre, this Chevy Colorado, this is your truck. Why is it so filthy? Well, I've been away for too long and maybe one too many dirt roads, I guess. Could be. But this is the high output powertrain. And it's the same one if you choose a GMC Canyon yeah. size truck or Chevy Colorado. Uh, a lot of them have the same power rating. 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. Oh, that's torque. That's like diesel, massive oh, diesel territory. Goodness, races. And so that makes it the most powerful of the of The, the most size torquiest. And the to highest towing rating of the whole group. Yes, and also an eight speed automatic. That's the only transmission you can have. Yeah, this was in the bigger trucks not too long ago. This is a midsize. You don't want to have the same power as a full size, you know. And you, I wish they would get better gas mileage in a full size, but they don't. So I know it's a big gap. Well, there. look, over the lifetime of my truck, 10,000 miles of my life, 18.9 mpg overall. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's your, that's like a full size truck. It is. Most of your 1500s and 150s will do that. So. Yeah. Why? Why? You know, in the old days when we had mini trucks, those motorized wheelbarrows, Chevy Love and all those guys, and the Courier, I mean, we got much better fuel mileage. Well, because those trucks didn't have many features, fancy things, they were very lightweight. Yeah. But of course, you know, safety regulations, emissions regulations, and also customers who love features, right? Sure. They changed the trucks. And most of those were manual transmissions. Most of them were single cabs. You know, every other double cabs. Very few of them were four wheel drive. So I guess maybe that's what it is, but they're equipped different. I am ready for this. Let's measure the okay. interior sound. Okay. You mean now? Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna call it a 6.3. 63. Yeah. You know, there is a little bit more engine noise coming from the engine bay. Yeah. Even though the RPM is still about, what, 3,700 pounds, I'm partial throttle. Yeah. It's like an afternoon drive for me. I'm, I'm, you know, really comfortable with my power. I could pass at any moment in time. Yeah. But yeah, it's you're a little no bit way, louder. You're, you're nowhere near open, wide open throttle. No. You got plenty of room left to pass somebody. And this is cool, but you know, yeah, I don't know if it's if it's insulation in the engine compartment or what it is, because it's not really road noise. In the old days, that used to be the biggest problem in all these trucks was road noise coming through the floor pan. Let's monitor our transmission. It's getting a little warm, but still 223, I would say is, is okay. I don't want to see it, you know, approach 240 or something like that. So transmission is 223? Yep. Then my coolant temp is 210. 210. My oil temp is 237. 
So it's getting warm, pretty warm as well. But not bad. Yeah. Well, it's pretty easy to get in here. Tip my hat down like a longhorn. Oh, this is kind of the faux leather. Well, um, it, looks, it looks nice. And these are manual seats once again. And here's the thing. If you wanted more comfort than the GM Mid-Size Trek, uh -huh. uh, the higher trim levels, like the Z71 and the more fancier ones, ZR2s, and also GMC Canyons have more adjustments. They have power adjustments, yeah. heated and ventilated. So if you want more comfort, you got to pay more money. Well, yeah, see, you chose the leather seats. You didn't choose to get too many other things. So I guess it's the way you want it, but no, it's, it's comfy. I, I I couldn't drive this as long as I could the other ones. You know, I've, I've noticed these 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 Colorados and Canyons. They seem to run a little hot, don't they? Seems like they run a little hotter than the. Well, well, the coolant is great. Two ten. Yeah, yeah. The coolant is like nothing. The Trans is two twenty six, and the oil is two forty one, which is getting yeah, warm. It gets into the yellow there. Seems like they run a little warm. Might even be full size. All right, too. we need to look at our time. Are you ready? Yes. Sorry, we had some traffic and stopping now. 7.54. 7 minutes, 54 seconds, almost 70, 55. And 5.1 MPG. Okay, wow, good MPG. 5.1 MPG. Let's measure the laden suspension height in the Chevy Colorado. On this side, it's 36 and a half. 36 and a half. On the other side, it was 36 and a quarter. Yes. Right? Okay, so let's call it, well, let's unhook the trailer and see where it falls. Yeah. See what the squat is on this puppy. All right, Mr. Truck, so this hitch is a little bit more hidden than the Ford. Yeah, yeah, because I make it hard to put that pin in. It looks like the pin's behind the gusset. Yeah, the pin, is, the pin is behind this gusset. I have to reach a little bit further. So, so far, maybe the Ford is, was a Probably the easiest yeah, of, they, the, they of the bunch. Of now, Mr. Truck, let's measure the unladen height. Yes, sir. Ooh, this is like right below 38. So that's like, let's see, 37 and three quarters. Okay. It was. 38 and a quarter on the other side. Yeah. So it uh, evens out to 38. That's what it is, okay. So now, 38 minus what we had before. Uh-huh. That's looking at the numbers. That's like one and two thirds. That's good math. <laughs> one and two thirds. So okay. actually, so far, this is the least amount of squat that we've had. Yeah. So good job, Chevy. Uh, yeah, Chevy's amazing. I'm impressed. All right. And it's your truck. Now, Tacoma. Tacoma. Now let's check the Toyota Tacoma unladen height. Exactly. On this side, it's 38 and a quarter. On the other side, it was 38 and a quarter also. Yes, they're, they're really amazing. And we're on uneven ground. How's that working out? <laughs> that means they're compensating that flex of the rear end. This is a five flake, right? Yeah, with a coil. coil spring. Yes. Mr. Truck, so this is the Tacoma, right? right? And on this hitch, it's double wall. Do you see this? Yeah. There's an interior wall, which makes inserting a hitch a little bit more challenging because I need to find my pin. Can you see all the way through the hole without getting down your belly? No, I have to get down. Hold on. Okay, I think I did it. So that's, I mean, it's for strength, right? I guess. And then the, these are very visible. All right, let's finish the chain hookup. Yeah, that's very easy. Let's measure the laden suspension height. On this side, it's, what, 35, 35 and a half. So it averages out to, 35 and three quarters, yeah, right? It was gonna be really cool about two and a quarter, but whatever that is. Okay, so that's 35 and three quarters. And then we had 38 and a quarter. Two and a half, could that be? Yeah, it was at least two. It squatted quite a bit, actually. Yeah, it did, it did.
the final truck is the best seller and it's oh. also all new yes 2024 Toyota Tacoma well my Toho mode is enabled we have our aftermarket brake controller because we didn't get an optional brake controller right I'm gonna pop out of the tunnel at the top of the mountain for the downhill in the same way at 50 miles an hour and then we'll see what happens cool yeah we'll learn a lot about this truck pulling a trailer oh it's bright okay I'm letting go in my gauges on my gauge screen I'm monitoring my turbo boost transmission okay. temp and also oil temp cool but uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later did we ever write down the boost on the Ranger what it was no we did not okay hold on let me this is my first brake application now okay brake application now Did it downshift? It did downshift. That's good. And it's tow home. I'm glad they got that instead of that, whatever that transmission thing was that they used to use. ECT power? ECT, yeah. Yeah, that's gone. I so like it's this. more trucky now. Yes. And it's a little bit more like a Tundra in some ways. Well, yeah. Now, it tows 6,500. We're at 62. Is that higher than it was last model? No, it's identical, identical. almost identical to what okay. it was before. Well, they're, they're uh, known for their off road abilities, so. Okay, I have to hit it one more time. That was pretty close together. How does it handle? Uh, pretty good. Uh, also, so all five of these trucks, I would say, with this type of trailer, with this weight, there's no trailer sweat, but we loaded it correctly. Yeah, yeah, you're a little tongue heavy. You should be uh, a little tongue heavy. Yeah, so we have just over 10% tongue load. Oh, one more brake application. Okay. And you need that because we don't have a, a, a weight distributing hitch, and so that you need yeah. a little tongue, tongue heavy. And when towing over 5,000 pounds, we always recommend weight distribution yes, hitches. Yes, we do. Yes, always. It's just that for this run, I wanted it kind of feel how it reacts without it right now because yeah. we're comparing yeah, trucks. Yeah, because you can tell how much it sways and you know all that stuff is good to know when you're towing a trailer downhill like this. Because you got to use your brake controller to control it sometimes if it starts swaying too much. Yeah, this truly is the all new Tacoma, right? They've touched everything. The yeah. frame is new. It's fully boxed now. The interior is new. The powertrains are new. And the payload, I think, is not super great. 1,200 pounds on this guy. Yeah, that's not super great. But, you know, that's a. This truck looks so different. I mean, it's such a chiseled look. It looks so different than the rounding corners that they're used to seeing on these. I, I like it. I like the looks of it. And this is also a tier of the off-road. So there's a coming, common theme here. Yeah. A lot of these trucks are lifestyle vehicles, right? Oh, yeah. You want to combine off-road ability with a little bit of towing and capability. And all of these trucks are doing that in different ways. Um, I'm looking at my transmission temp and it's staying where it was. It's in the middle of the gauge. Okay. So if you can write down 50%, on the transmission tamp. Okay. On the downhill. One more brake application. Does it feel a little different being a, a five link versus a leaf spring like the, between this and the Ranger? Can you feel a difference? Is there a little more movement back there? Or no? no, actually, I think they did a really great job. Yeah. You know uh, who was kind of first at this with a coil rear end was the Ram. Yeah. 1500. Right. And then the Jeep Gladiator took that design. Yeah. And now a lot of people are switching to that design. Yeah. Including similar design here. One yeah. more break. Okay, including like Raptor. Is that nine? Uh, yes, it is. That's interesting about truck companies. They kind of copy each other. Same way with accessories. The sister, after they have a lot of the aftermarket stuff for a lot of special things are, are made by somebody else. And I'll get them a contract for maybe two years, then they give it to everybody else. So it, it actually helps the industry, but I mean, you know, they're always watching the other guy and seeing what they can change. Nine brake applications. Ooh, I think I have to hit it again. I do. Okay. I'm hitting it final time. Well, that makes 10, kind of tied with, uh, which one did it tie with? Oh, uh, that's the Nissan. It ties Nissan. with Nissan. Okay. But it was a, a bit better than the Colorado. And yeah. what, about the same as the Ranger, right? Let's climb the mountain in the Tacoma. Cool. I actually kind of dislike the way the strip meter works in the, in the middle here, but are you ready? Yep. 
timer now. There, I reset my trip A. You're 60, tell me you're 60. And I'm at six now. I'd say 18.8. All right, so it's a bit slower than the uh, Ranger and the Colorado. Yeah. But still not bad. No. About 18 8? Yeah. Now we can relax. There should be plenty of, I mean, the torque comes on so early, right? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's incredible. It comes on at 1700 RPM. That's like diesels. Yeah, it's almost a diesel-like character. Yeah, we used to brag that about the EcoBoost, how so they came on real early like that. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I'm going to also look at my boost. It's not quite full throttle right now, but it's somewhere around 12 PSI, maybe? Yeah. 7 to 12. So it's, it's kind of relaxed. And here's the thing about um, Toyota, right? Yeah. They could have increased horsepower a lot. They didn't. You know, they could have, you know, gave us a lot more torque, but I think they just struck a balance, right? A balance yeah. between power and efficiency. Well, that's what I was saying when we drove the Sequoia. At Toyota, they always give room for, you know, longevity. They do that because they don't go after every single thing all the competition does. They'll get up level to them, but they don't go past them. You would think they would when they only make trucks every, what, 16 years, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You'd think they want to be late class leading when they make a change, but apparently there's more interest in longevity, so they take it easy. They don't yep. overwork these things, so that's their philosophy, and it's not a bad one. See, too, that's, they also have a philosophy about resale value. That's why they don't like rebates. You know, the dealers, the dealer networks in the United States will put out rebates, but the factory won't. They think it hurts resale value, and it probably does. So they don't always follow the crowd. Whoa, now they, they downshifted a couple of times. And it's not oh. telling me what gear I'm in. What did the RPMs go up to? It went up to like 4,500 RPM. Yeah. Well, that's... Do you want to uh, measure the... Let me pass this truck first, yeah. and, then, yeah. and then we'll measure our interior sound. Okay. Oh, the new Tacoma! This is an exciting all new truck, and it looks all new. Yes. Now, this, they got rid of their V6 and V8s. This is what, an inline turbo? Yes. So they're going turbocharged all the time now, basically, for a lot of their vehicles. And this is a 2.4 liter inline four turbo, just like the Colorado and the Ranger turbocharged engines. And the power rating is a little bit more than the uh, Ranger, 278 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. And this one has the eight-speed automatic. Cool. Several eight speeds in his lineup, but no, this is a cool looking truck. Okay, let, let's measure it. I'm gonna go with 61. 61, yeah. okay. So that was partial throttle. Yeah. We're once again maintaining speed with ease. Yeah. Um, and it's not the loudest, but I can still hear the engine. It's similar to the Chevy. Yeah. I can kind of hear a lot of engine. Yeah, exactly. The Chevy was pretty loud for being for the engine. Yeah. Yeah, and it and it uh, still had good number, but uh, yeah. I want to say the Ford was the most pleasing on the sound. It wasn't yeah. too loud and it wasn't too harsh. Right. Right. I think the Ranger was, I think probably the best today, as far as kind of interior comfort, as far as sound is concerned. Right. It's interesting. The Ranger tows a thousand pounds more than this one does. Yeah. All right, so my coolant temp is in the middle, about 50% gauge. Okay. My oil temp, I want to say it's climbing a little. I want to say it's about 65% gauge. And my transmission is about 60% of the gauge. I don't have numerical numbers. So it's getting a little warm, but not terribly. I would say it's doing a little bit better than the Chevy as far as transmission temp. Yeah as far as the gauge is telling me. Aha! Uh -huh. right, this first, the, this <laughs> brand new truck, the Tacoma. So the big complaint used to be is that the seat was too low, right? Oh, the seat was on the floor. And you, you know, I want to sit down in a truck and I want the, uh, 
it's a feel like a kitchen table. You know, you're sitting on a chair, with yeah. your feet down. And there's your feet were like straight forward, like in a Lotus or something, or a go-kart. This is much better. And, you know, so I think they... Did they raise the roof? Yeah, they raised the roof a little bit. They raised the seat bottom a little bit. The seat is cloth. Once again, it's got that kind of soft tax material. Yeah. Um, but the bolsters are huge on, yeah, on the I can, top. I can see them there. That's My back aches from all this movement, so that bolster really helps me out to have that middle lumbar come out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this has this got the old O shoot handles and everything else. But, yeah, this is more comfortable than any Tacoma I've been in. I'm so happy that they did that, even though this is all manual seats, too. I got to ask you, if you were to put your money down on a seat, which seat stands out? I probably would pick this seat. My vote would be the Ford Ranger, actually. You do? Yeah. But I, I like most of these seats. The Jeep is a little bit odd because yeah. it's a little bit hard and it's, it's kind of right. too much forward almost. Um, but range. I think the Nissan, the Ranger, and this Tacoma, I think have probably the best comfortable seats. Holy cow. All right, I think we're on bump stops. We are getting to the finish line, top of the mountain. Final truck, the best seller. And the timer stops now. 7.5, 7 yeah. 7 minutes, 50 seconds. And 4.9, 4.9 MPG. So the efficiency was decent, maybe not the leading efficiency. Right. Um, and the time was really perfect, right? Perfect time up yeah. the mountain. Yeah, exactly. Can't, you can't fault it there. No, so it's, you know, it's it's a trailering capable truck. Yeah. I think we may be a little bit over payload. Probably a little. That's easy to do. These companies don't give you enough payload. And five trucks in one day is very tough. The sun's going down. It's been a yes. long day. How about we go to the studio so you know who the winner is? Let's run the numbers. Bam! We're in the studio at CFL headquarters. Cool. Yes. And here how the numbers break down. We had seven categories for the I Gauntlet, yeah. and the towing technology category one. Clearly by the Ford Ranger. Yes, and it's because of the screen size or, I mean, cameras, what was it? Yeah, so it's, it was a combination of things. Brake controller access, trailer memory, tow haul memory, trailer backup assist system. It had all of those things. Holy cow. And so it's really like a big truck that was shrunk down into a smaller Ford Ranger. It was, because they didn't really do anything to the body. I mean, they didn't change the engine, so I'm surprised, but they did do technology to it. Now, the second category I'm calling the hookup, which basically means how the trailer connects to the truck and how easy it is. It's not because the trucks are out looking for other girl trucks. No. Okay, good. But actually, the Gladiator won this one, surprisingly. Really? So that's the one that's easier to hook the chains to? Because some of those yeah. were not easy at all. Well, the Gladiator has a good ground clearance, which means okay. the tow hitch is easy to reach and the chain loops for the uh, uh, chains for the chain hooks is easy. And also the seven pin connector was the good one, right? So it's right. not rattle, rattling around. No, you're right. And I think that too, because the hitch stick out further, which is a, you know, it's a truck for crying out loud. They should have the hitches out there ways. Next category is suspension squat. So the least amount of squat wins. Yes, and this was a towing video, so that's important. Yes, Chevy Colorado wins this category. Without a question, it had the least amount of squat. And it's leaf springs. It's not like something new. So that's way, way to go, Colorado. Good job. Now we get to the downhill performance. And actually, surprisingly, the Jeep Gladiator was the best. It had the fewest brake applications. Wow. That surprises me. I know, because yeah. I thought turbocharged engines, you know, could use their turbochargers maybe. Yeah, back to pressure, yeah. Yeah, to help them slow down. But no, the Jeep with its V6 was the best. Wow. And did it have tow haul mode? No. It, it did it without tow haul How mode. does that work? <laughs> Jeep, can you please explain uh, it to us? Yes. That surprises me. Now for the iGauntlet uphill performance. This was a very close competition between all of the turbocharged trucks. Yes. Um, the Jeep was the slowest, so it didn't win. Right, right. But the Chevy Colorado did win. 
Wow. Well, this is important uphill. Of course, we know downhill is really important, braking. But this is amazing. That includes, you know, temperatures, MPG, the, you know. Acceleration. Acceleration, Time exactly. up the mountain, all that stuff. So by a small margin, Colorado wins. Wow. That's good. That's good. It's actually probably the oldest truck out there, wasn't it, out of the five? No, the Nissan was. Oh, the Nissan? I mean, the Pentastar Jeep is the oldest truck. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. Our sixth category is about capability, and this is very simple. On paper, who had the best payload numbers and who had the best towing numbers? And on paper, it was a tie between the Colorado and the Ranger. Wow, well, that's cool. Well, capacity, you know, that's I know the kind of off-road trucks out there, but capacity for your your uh, payload and your towing, that's still important to people because they'll, they'll pull a lot of boats and little RVs with these trucks. Yeah, and, you know, the Colorado had the best towing at 7,700 pounds, uh, but also comparable payload, so they're tied. Yeah, that is. I remember how good the stats to me stood out for that Colorado. It's doing well. Now, before we crown the iGauntlet winner, we have to talk about value, right, and the pricing on these trucks. The Colorado was technically the most affordable at 41200 bucks. Yeah, uh, the next one was the used Jeep, uh, really at forty five. <laughs> it was slightly used. Okay. okay. Uh, then the Tacoma at forty five thousand three hundred, and the Ranger and the Frontier were the most expensive ones out of the bunch. Wow. So really, I mean, Colorado wins this category, but you might argue that, hey, Andre, why didn't you bring a more expensive Colorado to this test? Well, yeah, those are kind of hard to find, you know. But that's good. I mean, I'm really surprised that the, that the Tacoma wasn't way more higher. Because it's all new truck and it's yeah. all that new stuff. And it, yeah, it's awesome. But wow, we're kicking it there. That's good. So now using my fancy spreadsheet technology, we can claim that by a narrowest of margins, the Chevy Colorado wins this test. Oh, do you do, see can, this? Can we talk about seat comfort? <laughs> you, you, you chose the Nissan. Yes. Yes. So you, I, you chose the I, Nissan. <laughs> which one did you choose? Uh, I chose, I, I think I chose the Ranger. Oh, that's okay. So we were kind okay. of, uh, this is a subjective part, but yeah. you know, the Nissan was really comfortable yeah. uh, as far as the seat is concerned. But the problem when you load it up, right, yeah. is that you start hitting the bump stops. The Coma had that problem. Yes. And the Frontier had that problem. But we were pretty darn high in weight on that Tacoma. We were. So there you have it. Uh, this is as close as we can make it. And by the narrowest of margins, the Colorado is the chief of towing. Wait a minute. The winner is your truck? Oh, what? This is, what? This, this is stacked up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay. You didn't can't even count about the color of your truck? No. Put that category in here. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. See you next for time. For joining us at oldtfl.com and store.mrtruck.com. Yes. Oh, my goodness. The microphone's going crazy over here. Okay. Did that sound crazy when I hit the microphone?